The University of Dayton Arena. As the road to the Final Four continues, our second game of the day out of the Minneapolis bracket, Georgetown and Ohio State. And the brackets in Minneapolis, the winner of this game advances to take on Billy Donovan and his Florida Gators. John Thompson the third in his second season as the head coach at Georgetown. On the other sideline, Thad Mata also in his second year. We take a look at the starting lineups, and this should be a battle of the big men. Roy Hibbert, a seven-footer, and Terrence Dial, 6'9", Big Ten player of the year. Corbett, Whitehead, Perone, the officials. Russ Johnson, Len Elmore, Green and Dials will jump it up. Ohio State advancing by beating Davidson in the first round. Georgetown by taking care of Northern Iowa. And the Hoyas control the tip. Ohio State starts out in man-to-man, -man, and you're right. This should be one played in the trenches. Wallace picks it up. Now Cook steps into a three. And the Hoyas are on the board. You're going to see an awful lot of inside-out play from both teams as they shoot the ball from beyond the arc pretty well although Ohio State obviously their big guy from the perimeter Jaquel Foster in a horrific slump Butler looking for Dials inside but they need to stretch the defense and Dials is working against the 7-2 forced it up no Dials with the rebound at football now what should we pay attention to early in this game well you just saw an example Georgetown's got to touch the dial as in Terrence Dials We've got to play him physical and not allow him to get to the basket. And Ohio State's got to solve their perimeter slumps. If they shoot the ball well from outside, it opens it up more for Terrence Dials in the middle. Foul called on Dials. Bowman picks up his dribble. He's guarded by Sylvester. Bowman with the advantage, especially off the dribble. So that last play, he could have taken one more dribble and gotten head and shoulders past Sylvester to the basket. But Georgetown's going to run that Princeton style back towards even for the big boy. Three and up. Loose ball. And this one out of bounds off of the Hoyas. Dad Mata really upset. Thought that Georgetown should have been called for jumping over the back as Green just came flying in there looking for the putback. Georgetown. With some full court pressure, steal by Bowman. And he misses the layup. Butler the other way. To a cutting Sullinger. J.J. Sullinger, 13 points, 13 rebounds in their first round win. Continue to look at the battle. Terrence Dials fronting Roy Hibbert and has another turnover. Toss to the basket. And John Thompson III signaling to his team to slow down a little bit. Let's take it easy, relax. Pro Ohio State crowd. You think? I <laughs> think. About an hour from Columbus. This is a home game. The Big Ten versus the Big East. Hibbert draws a double. And he has it knocked out of his hands. And Roy Hibbert, very instrumental. In Georgetown getting this far, terrific game against Northern Iowa, but he's going to be doubled and tripled. He's going to have to be a little niftier with the ball, have to hold the ball over his head, trying to locate out of the doubles and find open people. 17 points, 9 rebounds against Northern Iowa. Cook, step back jumper. Ashanti Cook, a senior from Inglewood, California. Georgetown sets up the press. What's the point of this press right now for John Thompson the third? Well, it's to create, try to create some turnovers, although Ohio State really takes care of the ball. Only four turnovers for the game against Davidson. It's to create the turnovers and really try to throw Ohio State out of their rhythm. Also, pressure takes the big guy out of the game as you continue to force guys to handle the ball. Shot clock runs down. You force to take a perimeter shot instead of getting it inside. Six to shoot. Butler, deep jump shot. No. Long rebound. Track by Green. Wallace 
Off the bounce. Nice look. Hibbert. And one. Basket by Roy Hibbert. And big Roy Hibbert will go to the line. And if you can't get it to the big fellow on an entry pass, penetration does just as well. Penetrates, forced to help to step up, and then your big man on the baseline just got to go strong. Roy Hibbert, a sophomore center from Adelphi, Maryland, with the Georgetown prep. He's 7-2, and he has great skill, continues to improve, not with each game, but with each practice. John Thompson, Jr., former head coach at Georgetown, said when compared to Patrick Ewing, Alonzo Morning, and Dikembe Mutombo, he's never seen a big guy at Georgetown improve so quickly. Hit it with the rebound. And we saw again Ohio State forced to shoot it from beyond the arc. You know, not really desirous of getting the ball into Terwilliger. He turns Dials on the bench. Now Hibbert on Terwilliger. Easy. Roy Hibbert using that big frame to give Georgetown a four-point lead. See, this is where Foster's got to take over. Long jump shot. Way off the mark for Foster. He had a 7-2 guy in his face. Bowman, Wheeler! Challenger oh. there, and jump ball to call. Possession arrow favors the Buckeye. 15-34 to play, first half. Hoyas leading at 10-6. Hoyas leads it 64. with a 10-6 lead, a 7 Taking on a two with 15.34 to go here in the first half. Dials remains on the bench. Terrence Dials with one foul. Ten six Hoyas. A seven taking on Ohio State. A two. Driving the tear drop the door. Roy Hibbert with the rebound. And that's an example of what the Georgetown defense has done. It's kind of kept Ohio State on the perimeter. Only one opportunity for Dials inside, and he's on the bench. Flip side, the big guys have been getting involved for Georgetown as well as the perimeter shooters. They're getting good inside out balance on the offensive end. Now, Bowman, the winner of this game will take on Florida. Al Green a three. Bowman with the rebound, can't hold on. Hibbert hits the deck. He's tied up, but the Hoyas will retain possession. Don't forget, coming up, those of you expecting to see, and this one should be a shootout, folks, Arizona, Villanova. We will get you to that game shortly. And how about Arizona? They've surprised some people. Well, they ha certainly have. Again, a lot of people had written them off, written the Pac-10 off. But in the end, they've stepped up to the point where I think they want to be. Nice run-and-gun outfit, the same thing with Villanova. Speaking of the Pac-10, what a great matchup in the Sweet 16. UCLA and Gonzaga. Adam Morrison, only 14 points against Indiana. The average is 30. Bowman down the lane. Can't get it to fall. So Williger with the rebound. Georgetown getting a lot of opportunities in the paint. Just can't convert. Ohio State can't afford too many of those. Ron Lewis, and he's fouled. Georgetown foul number two, Jonathan Wallace. Is first As Jonathan Wallace commits the foul. Interesting. Terrence Lewis Giles is on the bench with 14.05 to go here in the first half. Well, again, the game only has one foul to gain some perspective out here and to see where he can be effective. First free throw good for Lewis. Vote for the Pontiac game changing performance of this round. Nearly $150,000 of scholarship contributions is on the line. Vote now at NCAAsports.com slash Pontiac. And sometimes, Gus, early in the game, it's good to have your key guy when he's the focal point of the other guy's defense. To be able to take a look, step back and look and see what's going on out there. Hibbert posting up inside. Backdoor, cook, double clutch, got it. 
Ashanti Cook. Boy, how about Ashanti Cook right now? Drilling threes, going back door, slicing in the part of the Ohio State defense. Really an unsung hero for Georgetown, actually all year. Seven points for Cook, three of three from the field. And the Buckeyes throw it away. Georgetown substitution number 20. Everett and Cook for Brandon Bowman. Putting in work. Boy is with the lead. Third time these two teams have met. Ohio State leads the series 2-1. Their last meeting 1999 in Las Vegas. Buckeyes ranked seventh. Boy is ranked 12th. And they won it 71 to 60. Inside Wallace. Cook deep again. Sullinger with the rebound. Long outlet. Foster ahead of the field. Rejected. Cook took the shot and blocked it on the other end. Foster lost the handle, never did recover. Jump hook Wallace. No. It won't count offense. Well, again, you see the excellent rebound by Sullinger in the outlet pass, and watch him lose the handle right there. And that gave the defender enough time to elevate. And again, we talk, can't say enough about Ashanti Cook and the things that he's been doing out here on both ends of the floor. Sullinger and Terwilliger head to the bench. Sylvester and Dials, the two veterans back in the game. Wallace with two fouls now. As he comes out and is replaced by Jesse Sapp. Ohio State, regular season champs of the Big Ten. They lost in the conference tournament to Iowa. Ball deflected. Sylvester commits the foul in the process. One guy's foul number 40, Matt Sylvester, his first team's third. And he picks up his first. Sylvester, too intent on getting the ball to Terrence Dials instead of reading the defense. He had an opportunity to go to the basket instead, telegraph that pass. And again, Dial's doing a good job of fronting Hibbert, not allowing the straight entry pass. Boy has scored the big victory this season over then number one and undefeated Duke at the MCI Center. Green throws it back. Cook picks it up with nine to shoot. Here's Hibbert. Great catch. Kept it up high and banked it in. And you must love big man play like that. Absolutely. With the good hands and never bringing it below his shoulders at 7-2. Uses his size to the fullest advantage. Hibbert with seven, Cook with seven, dies. Going right through the seven-footer. And we talked about having to be physical. Roy Hibbert cannot allow Terrence Dials to set up with two feet in the lane. He's got to bump him and push him off the, off the lane. Dials with 19 points. Oh, nice, nice back door inside. Boy, Jeff Green, unbelievable. He is one of the best bounce passers in the nation and perfect for that style of offense. Ashanti Cook with nine. And bounce passing is an art, trust me. You don't see the bounce pass thrown often enough in the right situation, but Green is one of those guys that understands the game. Lewis a three, partially blocked by Hibbert. Don't forget, for those of you expecting to see Arizona Villanova, we'll get to there in a moment. The dribble wheeling it. Are you kidding me? What? Patrick Alonzo to Kimbe never did it. No, they couldn't do it. <laughs> you talk about confidence right here. Roy Hibbert showing everybody something. 18 10. Sylvester. Lewis on the bounce. No, Green with the rebound. And the Hoyas' size, Lenny, is causing Ohio State all kinds of problems. Well, they run 6'9", six, 6'9", nine, six, nine, and 7'2", across that back line. And defensively, they're getting good position. A shot to Cook again. And all that would make it for me was right here with the hit of three. <laughs> <laughs> the big fella. Moving, grooving, and scoring. Hoyas by eight. Georgetown a seven, leading Ohio State a two by eight. And here in Dayton, we've had some great moments. Our first game, George Mason and 11 knocked off third seeded North Carolina. Well, they shocked the world as, as the revolution, the Patriots beat basketball royalty. 
Terrence Giles struggling with the size of the Hoyas. Now Ohio State gets into a zone. Green on the baseline. Hits. That's what Georgetown needs. They need someone else other than Roy Hibbert and Ashanti Cook to create some problems for the Ohio State defense. The diversity in offense forces Ohio State to honor everyone, and that makes this score that much more effective. Largest lead of the game for the Hoyas. Lewis, who had 19 in their first round win over Davidson, can't get free and throws it away. And Terrence Dow's getting really frustrated. He's setting a lot of screens, rolling down in the paint, getting open, and his team is going away from him instead of towards him. And the Hoyas have taken this hometown crowd completely out of the game. George down on a 17-4 run. Owens and Cook play catch. Ohio State now playing 2-3 zone. Recognizing they can't do much with Georgetown man to man at this juncture. Cook missing the three, Owens with the rebound. Twenty ten, Hoyas. State looking for offense now. This Hoya defense has been terrific early on. Foster D. Boy, that sound is a collective sigh of relief by the Buckeye faithful, Jaquel Foster, in a horrendous slump. Oh, Starting to show signs of life. 8 13 to play first half. Hoyas with a 20 13 lead. And now, our Southwest Airlines sideline report. Seniors Terrence Diles and J.J. Sullinger are college graduates as of today. The pair was scheduled to receive their diplomas today upon completion of Ohio State's 2006 winter quarter. But unfortunately, or fortunately, they're busy. Diles earned a degree in sociology. Sullinger, African-American studies. I think they can get a note from their coach <laughs> excusing them. Right now, though... The Hoyas dominating inside. Green with four points. The press has caused Ohio State some trouble. And Jaquel Foster is back to back. Jane. I told you, that will pull Georgetown out of that pressure because if he can hit those jumpers in transition, it'll bring Ohio State back that much quicker and also open it up for Terrence Dow. Bowman. Georgetown in the first round, beating Northern Iowa 54 to 49. Hibbert, the star in that game. And look at Ohio State zone, packed in tightly, inviting Georgetown to shoot the perimeter shot. Going in the runner, chased his own rebound. Terrence Dials, the senior, pulls it in. Now Foster, back to back jump shots. He's on now. 22-19. And as you mentioned, Jaquel has been mired in an awful slump. And this Georgetown program didn't think that he could come out here and shoot Jays like he has. And he has made it a 22-19 game. Well, he entered this tournament shooting nine for his last 59 three-point field goal attempts. Back to back to back for Foster. Ashanti Cook, 16 foot pull up, got it. Off the dribble. He has 11 points in the first half. You don't often see Georgetown players really create. Not that they don't have the liberty, but they're so team oriented. But Ashanti Cook showing us something right here. Got some skill. Let's see if they look for Jaquel Foster again. Curling. Inside, dials. Nice catch. Comes up short. Green contested. But you see what Jaquel Foster's accuracy has done now. Him on the same side as Dials. His man has to play him and not help on Dials. Create some room. Dials just misfired on that one. 
As you mentioned, Lenny, tight zone, green, pull-up jump shot, no. Now the Buckeyes are daring Georgetown to shoot it. And Sylvester fouled on the baseline. 5.33 to go in the first half. 24-19 Georgetown. But Ohio State continues to attack. And Georgetown leads Ohio State by five with Ohio State making a furious comeback. And the leader of that comeback, Jaquel Foster. It's been almost a tale of two seasons for Foster. Look at what's happened the last third of the season. Jaquel Foster having difficulty finding the rim, but not today as it seems as though he's starting to heat up the way that Jaquel Foster, the first two thirds of the season, absolutely did. Ohio State, 7 of 17 from the field, 41%. Foster has 11. Here he is. Crosses over now, going inside. And commits the foul. Have a look at the game summary. Well, obviously, field goal percentage, neither one of the team shooting all that great. Three-pointers, though, Georgetown, Ashanti Cook in particular, and the points in the paint, that's the inside-out combination working smoothly for Georgetown. Cook has been terrific with 11 points. Hibbert, a presence on the floor for Georgetown. He has nine. In the corner, Green passed up the three. Cook. And save from going out of bounds by Foster. Buckeyes can get even closer. Sylvester. Baseline jump shot. No. Wallace, three on two. Owens. Right. But Darrell Owens is the acknowledged sixth man of that team. Shoots almost 40% from beyond the arc. And he's very versatile, plays defense, but in transition, you can expect him to pull up anytime you see an open look. 27-19. Players have led by as many as 10. Dials. Nice. Thing, thing I like about that, Gus, is Dials is still on the move. He's not stationary where the defenses can help out. He's setting screens, he's rolling, he's coming across the lane. Makes it very difficult for the defense to catch up with him. Allows Ohio State to set up that 2-3 zone. Under four to go. A seven versus a two. The winner advances to Minneapolis. Great catch. Hibbert Black! Soldier! Boy, did he get up! Inside! Sylvester banks it home! Well, we had a chance to see probably the only time in this tournament in two games the Roy Hibbert didn't bring it when he went to the rim, and he paid for it. 27-23. Terrific job by Sullinger on the weak side. Inside, green, jump hook, got it. As he goes right over Matt Sylvester. Boy, what a luxury, not only to have a guy like Roy Hibbert on one low block, but to have a versatile guy like Jeff Green, who can play the high post as well as the low block, as a secondary low post score. Jeff Green only a sophomore from Hyattsville, Maryland. He has six points and he's 6'9". <laughs> Sylvester stripped. Oh, and we'll head the other way. But watch J.J. Sullinger. Seven-footer. Not today. Coming up on Singular at the half, Greg Clark and Seth will take you out for a live look at all the action going on in the NCAA tournament, and they will get you caught up on all the latest tournament news, plus a Singular Naismith update. That's all coming up on Singular at the half. Ohio State applying a bit of token full-court pressure before they drop back into the zone. It's been pretty effective in slowing Georgetown down. Sat Owens, Green, Wallace and Hibbert for the Hoyas. Inside Green, 15-footer. Nice. And against that 2-3 zone, Green. Jeff Green's so valuable because a sweet spot beneath the free throw line in the paint, you got to be able to pass the ball and read and shoot the jumper if no defenders come up, and Green does it well. In the corner, Sullinger of three. Wallace with the weak side rebound. Hoyas have led by as many as 10.
Green again on the baseline. Hibbert with the rebound and it's tipped back. Looked like a little volleyball right there. Hibbert with 11 to go along with six rebounds. Dial steps out. Tipped up, no. Basket interference called on Sullinger. Tomorrow, Dave's all new with Denzel Washington. And later on this week, don't miss Sean Diddy Combs and Daytona 500 winner Jimmy Johnson. Well, that last possession by Ohio State, pretty good. They got Dials, a 12-footer. He can normally knock down. But much better ball movement against the Georgetown defense, and you start giving Terrence Dials some looks. Back door Owen. Jesus. I've always thought, Lenny, what would it be like if the Princeton offense was run by an athletic team? Well, Here's a perfect have. example. That's what you have right here. And they just knock you out with the intelligence, how they read the D so well. Dials pushed from behind. And again, they just use the aggression of the defenders against them. Take a look right here. Just bring it back outside. Just a little back door. Caught Sylvester sleeping on the job. And you can't sleep on Georgetown. Inside ball batted around and tipped in. Sullinger. And J.J. Sullinger at 6'5", undersized power forward. He's more of a power player than Sylvester right now. Doing a nice job of sinking in on the offensive glass. Sack. Deep in the corner. Owens, and he hits. Georgetown shooting 16 of 29 from the field. Make that 17 of 30 now. And Thad Mata has to talk it over. 20 seconds to go in the first half. Georgetown up big. Eleven two run for the Hoyas. John Thompson, the third son of legendary coach John Thompson Jr., who won a national championship with Patrick Ewing. Uh, but now this Georgetown team, a totally different kind of team as they run the Princeton-styled offense. Well, they certainly do, but defensively, first of all, you look at what they're all about. They only allow 59 points a game. Again, because they really focus on helping each other. And they got the shot blockers on the back line. Sylvester, three, blocked by Green. And that'll be the end of the first half. 38-25, Hoyas with the lead at halftime. We'll send you to Greg Gumbel with Singular at the half after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching CBS Sports on our 25th Road to the Final Four. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the Men's Basketball Championship is sponsored by Dell, Southwest Airlines, Chevrolet, and by Miller. Halftime in Dayton, the Minneapolis bracket. Georgetown leads Ohio State. Gus Johnson along with Lynn Elmore. Hoyas look great. Jaquel Foster breaks out of the slump, and he's kept this Ohio State team in the game. Well, again, we talked about that slump for the last third of the season, but in the end, it comes down to the thousand shots that he's been taking when he's been able to practice, and it's paying off. He's the one who's keeping Ohio State in this ball game. And you take a look at the shooting percentages, Georgetown just hot as fire. Three for nine from beyond the arc for Ohio State. They've got to get more. But in the end, it comes down to stretching the Georgetown defense and getting big man Terrence Dials more looks. Dials only three of six from the field. He needs more touches. Big Ten player of the year, a monster inside when his teammates play with him. So we start the second half. Boy is up 38-25. And let's compare the stars today, Cook and Hibbert, Dials and Foster. On the inside-out combination with Georgetown, obviously working well. Jaquel Foster holding up his end of the bargain. 
but they've got to play with the big fella dials oftentimes have set screens rolled open to the basket only to have his team take the ball away from him we've got to be more focused in getting him touching now Butler quiet offensively the point guard Sylvester down the lane running jump shot got it and that'll help once again if you're going to focus on denying dials that takes away the help down the middle you got to drive the ball at Georgetown so we start the second half. Owens on the floor with Green. Wallace Hibbert and Ashanti Cook. Then the shoot Green down the lane, leans in. No. Rebound. Shot clock did not reset. Cook in the corner. And Sylvester pulls it down. And Dallas is wide open. They don't even look at him. He's got Hibbert on his back, set up on the block. You got to go to the big toe. Let him touch and force the defense to attack. And Butler scores his first basket of the game. Now you're going to get some of those. A nice recognition by Butler, but I'm still surprised. And the crowd back into it now. Steele, Sullinger, but he steps on the sideline. So let's take a look at our tournament summary. Well, all of last year's Final Four teams gone. And George Mason, the surprise of this bracket, plays another surprise in Wichita State. And unless you're from Wichita, Kansas, or Fairfax, Virginia, I don't think anybody had that one. Inside, Hibbert. And he traveled. Terrence Dials keeping both hands up, refusing to yield. And the winner of this game will head to Minneapolis to take off Billy Donovan and the Florida Gators. Yutz Noah has been terrific for the Gators. He's the son of former French Open champion. Yannick Noah. Butler again. Short. Now three moving. Oh! oh! Solinger! But Ashanti Cook is there! And that's the second big block for Solinger. Boy, he did his part hustling back. Extraordinary leaping ability and great timing, but you got to have your teammates to follow. Look how deep Styles is in the paint. And he's fouled. He got Hibbert on his hip, and Hibbert picks up the foul. Boy, Sullinger, make you look over your shoulder going to the basket as he elevates. And again, just an extraordinary athlete at 6'5", plays the power forward position. Dials at the line. First one, good. CBS Sports Line is your destination for complete tournament coverage. Get bracket updates, video highlights, and expert analysis for each tournament game at CBSSportsLine.com. Both three throws good. For the big man from Ohio State. Boys have led by as many as 13, now 9. Ashanti Cook, sensational 13 points in this game. 11 at halftime, he has the ball now from Inglewood, California. And the Big East semifinal, Georgetown had a big lead against Syracuse, only to blow it and ultimately lose the game. They got a little tight, didn't execute well. Let's see if they learned their lesson. Ball tipped by Sullinger into the hands of Foster. Buckeyes can get even closer. Dials wants it. Hibbert has two fouls, the seven footer. Butler stop and start, and he stepped on the baseline out of bounds. You see Terrence Dials sitting on the floor right there. He thought he got knocked down by Ashanti Cook trying to run through his screen, but the official said, You too big, fella. <laughs> Takes more than that to knock you down. Terrence Dials from Youngstown, Ohio. Fifth-year senior. There's the patience of Georgetown. Little back door action, handoffs, and open jumper. Cook again. Ashanti Cook with 16. He's 
Six of nine from the floor. 43 to 31. Foster now tried to bounce pass. Out of bounds with 19 to shoot. And again, every time Ohio State sets that high screen, Dials rolls into the paint. He gets a defender on his back. His teammates have to recognize it a lot quicker if they want to utilize him where he can be successful. Sylvester posting up. A kick. Butler for three. Jamar Butler from Lima, Ohio. He's only a sophomore and a foul. Ohio State fouls on number 40, Matt Sylvester. Matt Sylvester picks up his second. Only the first team foul for Ohio State here in the second half. And good decision by Thad Mata to open this half with the full court pressure. Really taking Georgetown out of its rhythm. And the rhythm is to try to run this Princeton style, try to get the big fellas involved. Now without Hibbert in the game, much more open offense. Reaching foul on Butler. 15.53 to play in the second half. Butler picks up his second. Back to Dayton after this. George shot up 43 to 34. Let's take a look at Power Age, power in the paint. Well, it's Roy Herbert, 5 of 7 in the lane. He's done it economically, and he's also gone first class. <laughs> Very good. As Hibbert takes a seat, Georgetown as a team, 53% from the field. The numbers on Big Roy. Three-point shooting. Each team with four three-pointers made. Ashanti Cook has been the leader of this Georgetown team offensively, 16 points. Nothing but old-fashioned man-to-man, get-in-your-chest kind of defense from Ohio State. Owens. Now Butler pushing it up the floor. And Butler pulls up. Georgetown not as deliberate as you'd think running this offense. A little quick on the trigger right there. They got to give it some time. They've got the lead and they're rushing shots. Critics say the new adventures of old Christine is laugh out loud funny. Julia Louis Dreyfus stars in the number one new hit comedy right after a new two and a half men tomorrow on CBS America's number one network. And just a moment ago after that shot. You can see John Thompson III step up and tell his players, look, we don't need that. And that means not the quick shot. Run your stuff. Now Dials with Owens on his back. Spins. And that's a foul on Owens. And the shining moments today. How about Tony Skin? He comes back after serving that one game suspension. Hit the clinching free throws. Marcus Williams on the Connecticut Huskies. 20 points, 5 assists as Connecticut defeats Kentucky. You saw Patrick O'Brien, the other 7 footer. We'll talk about Roy Hibbert, a name that you hadn't heard from. Well, Patrick O'Brien, a 7 footer for Bradley, won the battle against Aaron Gray and the Pittsburgh Panthers. Both free throws good for Terrence Dials. Ohio State continues to fight. They trail by as many as 13. Their defense has tightened up here in the second half. Georgetown at 57% from the field in the first half. They're now at 50%. Backdoor Owens. <laughs> Tell you, that looks like Mitch Henderson to Gabe Llewellyn. Uh, Old talking, school Princeton basketball. That's right. You're talking Princeton style. And again, you just marvel at the way Green can bounce that bounce pass on a dime. Lewis, deep three. Rebounded by Ashanti Cook. 
See, the thing about Georgetown, they make you play defense. You want to play defense? You like playing defense? Then you want to play against the Georgetown Hoyas of the John Thompson III variety. And another jump shot going down, this time Green, a three-pointer. And that was just pure recognition of the fact that Dial's unwilling to come out on Green without Hibbert in the game. Dial's had to match up on the more versatile Jeff Green. Inside Dial's, he's fouled from behind. Two higher seeds losing today as Bradley defeats Pittsburgh and George Mason defeated North Carolina earlier. Wichita State over number two, Tennessee, Washington, beating D. Brown and the Fighting Illini. Tuesday on CBS. See why the unit has become TV's number one new show. Don't miss a new episode. Tuesday after NCIS on CBS, America's number one network. There it's Dials again. Dials now with 12 points at six at halftime. And Dials also starting to heat up a little bit. John Thompson III decides that Roy Hibbert, his time has come to get back in and present problems. Foul in the backcourt on Foster, reaching in on Jesse Sapp, his second. And see, Gus, the reactions now of the Ohio State players, when they react to every single call, and even the coaching staff, that tells me that they're starting to lose their focus a little bit. You can't afford that. 13-30 left in the ball game, 10-point game, plenty of time to come back. But you can't be so concerned about the officials' calls and not recognize that you got to play this game. Georgetown so patient offensively. Multiple passes before a shot attempt. Hibbert, wheeling, jump hook, no. And the rebound goes to Dial. That time, Terrence Dodge did a nice job of kind of nudging Hibbert away from the basket. Sullinger leaves his feet. Butler slashes. That one deflected out of bounds. Take a look at 34 on Hibbert right now. You, Dial's using his body nicely. And all he did was use that chest. It might have been a little bit of a foul, but... No call, no harm. Jaquel Foster, Butler, Dial, Sullinger, Ron Lewis. See, again, too slow to recognize Dial's open oh. defenders on his back. Jesse Sapp with the board. And Dials and Green getting up slowly in the backcourt. And the official wants the ball boy to wipe up the sweat on the floor. There's no call on the play. So Sap inbounds it to Cook. There's just two big fellas getting tangled up on the rebound and going down. The official's giving them a chance to gather themselves. Green with the step. Oh! Hibbert rebounds. Green batted out. Georgetown with a new shot clock. Good press presence of mind to tip it back outside. Now Hibbert, who's a great passer. You know, both Green and Hibbert work so well together. Look at that goal on Shanti Cook. Misses the layup. And John Thompson the third can't believe it. Inside, down. Remember that, that miss. 11.40 to play. Lead now eight. It's almost like a four-point turnaround. Hibbert. Why is oh, he missing? Missed it. Get it again, and he's fouled. Eleven thirty-three to play. Boy is by eight. Eleven thirty-three to play. Eight-point lead for the Hoyas. Uh, look at our game summary by half. And you take a look. Just as much as Georgetown has cooled down, Ohio State has heated up. And again, Jaquel Foster 
Obviously, he hasn't scored yet, but he really kept Ohio State in the game in the first half. And Ashanti Cook still leading Georgetown. Hibbert close to a double-double, 11 points, 9 rebounds. Has a block also. That's the first tonight on CBS. Time is running out for a victim buried alive. Catch a new episode of the hit drama Cold Case tonight on CBS America's number one network. Second free throw for Hibbert is good. He's a 70% shooter, and I'm so impressed by Hibbert's skill level. He's only a sophomore, but he does numerous things extremely well. Well, I suspect that he didn't do an awful lot of playing on the playgrounds because he doesn't have a lot of bad habits, and that's a good foundation to develop an excellent ball player. Another rebound, double-double now for Hibbert, his 10th rebound. And the winner here takes on Billy Donovan's Florida Gators, who took care of Milwaukee. 10-point lead for the Hoyers. Inside, Hibbert again. Hibbert's starting to let the little guys coming underneath him bother him a little bit on that roll to the basket. He looked down instead of looking, looking at the basket. Foster a three. And Jeff Green snatches it out of the air. Ivan Harrison now for Ohio State. He wears number three. Good perimeter shooter. Solid defender. And see, that's the element of the Princeton offense that normally when you run, you got to keep passing the ball. When you have guys who can create, it makes it a lot more difficult to go. Meanwhile, Butler hits a three. He was scoreless in the first half, has eight points now. Nine point lead for the Hoyas. Ohio State just unable to get stops. Green. Weak side rebound, Sullinger. Buckeyes trying to get closer. Giles hasn't touched it in a minute. But it's not because he wasn't open. His teammates just not reaching him quickly enough and not locating him quickly enough. And he wants the ball to come to his side. Now he pops out. Butler seven to shoot. Foster with five, back to Butler, stolen by Owens. Eight turnovers for the Buckeyes. And a timeout call by Georgetown. 9.03 to play second half. Hoy is up by nine. A seven leading a two. Well, it's been rough on the Big Ten during this year's tournament. Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Wisconsin, and Michigan State all going down. One team remaining. The Ohio State Buckeyes. And the Iowa and Michigan State upsets, huge upsets. Surprising everybody in the basketball community. And if Ohio State's going to avoid this upset, they've got to get Terrence Giles more touches. They've had 16 possessions in this half, and Giles only had five touches. He doesn't have to shoot it all the time. Giving him the ball forces the Georgetown defense to adjust and creates opportunities for others. Hibbert turns it over. Giles taking it away. Giles figures, hey, if you won't give it to me, i got to take it away myself. See if he can get a touch on offense here. Del Foster finds their big man. Spinning. And he dribbled it out of bounds. And that time, Terrence Styles gets it and didn't have to spin baseline. That's the frustration from not touching it enough. He was being double teamed from the middle, just had to turn, face the double team, find the open man, maybe allow Ohio State to make the second pass for the open shot. That double team forced an adjustment. That was an adjustment by Georgetown. Ohio State's got to pick it up and capitalize. Traffic blocked by Giles, though. 
Now you got to reward the big fella. Look at him locking. He's trying to lock down low. And his teammates still don't recognize it. Salinger. Ten to shoot. JJ. And the rebound goes to Sapp. Nice box out of Harris. Both teams cooling off now. Georgetown at 44%. Ohio State at 40. Boy is going away from their inside game. Owens batted up. Sapp with the offensive rebound. And out of the two guys, Sapp and Foster, you could see Sapp was more ready for that rebound as opposed to Foster, who stood there and watched. Hibbert, nice pump play. You're right. Every possession, he seems to improve. He seems to make a mistake, learn from that mistake, and build on it the next time he touches it. This kid's only a sophomore, folks. He can shoot, he can pass, he can rebound, block shots, and he's also got a little wiggle in his game. Boy is up. It's Taco Bell's Chicken Caesar Grilled Stuffed Burrito. Stuffed with marinated all-white meat chicken, crisp romaine lettuce, tortilla strips, and covered in Caesar dressing. All wrapped up and grilled to go. For the Chicken Caesar Salad Lover's Burrito, think outside the bun. Want to get away? Now you can. With Southwest Airlines Internet Specials, fly to 61 destinations for just $49 to $159. 11 point lead for the Georgetown Hoyas. The game reset. Three timeouts apiece. Neither team in foul trouble with 6.35 to go. John Thompson, the third, the son of Big John Thompson, who actually is in attendance. And he's working with CBS Radio. There he is, the legendary coach. Butler rejected by Hibbert out of bounds. 6.26 to play. 54-43. Big Roy leading the way. Six twenty-six to play. Second half. The Georgetown Hoyas, a seven out of the Big East Conference against the Ohio State Buckeyes. A two from the Big Ten inside Guile block, goaltending the call. And that's what I'm talking about, recognition. It's got to be a timing play. Dials breaks free and posts up. His teammates have to be in a position to deliver the ball on time before the defense can come over and help. And that time they did it with perfection. Roy Hibber taking up taken out of the game and dials now with 16 points 10 coming here in the second half the winner of this game will take on the Florida Gators in Minneapolis Ashanti Cook has 16 today Bowman Wallace a three and Green comes up with the rebound Every long rebound, every loose ball going to Georgetown. Green with seven boards now. And again, remember, Georgetown is doing this without the second leading scorer putting a point up. Brandon Bowman is 0 for 6 on the field and has not scored. 10 to shoot. Bowman. Quick step. Rejected by Sullinger again. This kid's a terrific ball player. There's Three that blocks. Did that man again. And a foul call. J.J. Sullinger. Watch him get up. From the weak side. Watch the spin by Green. Nice job. And then Sullinger from the weak side. Terrific timing. Fantastic elevation. Sullinger, a senior. He's from Columbus. Inside. Dials. Great position. Hibbert's on the bench. That means there's an opening for the big man. And again, we talked about delivering it when he can use it. Dial's a master at locking and presenting himself, but you got to get him the ball because if you leave him out there too long, the help comes and takes it away. 
Right now, Ohio State much more focused on getting Dials the ball at the right time. Dials adds the free throw. 5-11 to go. Here come the Ohio State fans. They've been waiting. They've been frustrated. And now they have hope. Time out. Hoyas. 5-11 to play. Here we go again. 54-48. And for Georgetown today, Bowman has struggled, but Green, Hibbert, and Cook have played extremely well. Well, certainly the Hoyas could use Brandon Bowman now, coming down the stretch. You know, the other three guys, a little bit fatigued. Ashanti Cook hasn't been heard from much with some of the ball handling duties. Here's Cook. Walks it over the midcourt line, draws Butler. Five minutes to play. And Bowman not even in the game right now. John Thompson the third, rather go with Jesse Sack. Georgetown is led by as many as 13. Hibbert's back in. Sack down the lane, the teardrop no. Rebounded Hibbert, and he sticks it in. Oh, that's a Hibbert. Excellent position down low, man. I cannot overstate how well Hibbert is playing on the offensive end. When he doesn't get it, he gets good position. He can read his teammates. Dials in the corner. He's got the smaller Wallace on him. Now he starts to back him down to the basket. No. Out of bounds will head the other way. That was a good idea. But Dials has to be smart enough to kick it back outside and then present himself once again with the little guy on him instead of trying to dribble and draw too much help. Owens back in the game now. For Georgetown with the ball. Green off the dribble. Ten to shoot. Green in the corner. Thought about it. Ball deflected. Out of bounds. With five to shoot. And a timeout goal. 3.46 to play. 56-48 Hoyas. Let's get you back to Dayton, Ohio, where Georgetown continues to lead Ohio State. Gus and Lane. Nice foul on number zero. J.J. Sellinger, his third. Team's fifth. 3.46 to play. Second half. Georgetown up 56-48. They've led by as many as 13. What a huge mental mistake by J.J. Sullinger with the foul. Obviously, instead of having five seconds remaining, the new clock. And with that out of bounds, Georgetown still has 31 seconds to shoot. And they're going to use all 31 seconds, I guarantee you. Hibbert. Trying to seal Dials. He has it. Backs him up. Has it knocked away. And stolen by Foster. Jaquel Foster. To Sylvester. Driver. Reversal. Butler. Sylvester D. And another rebound for Hibbert. His 12th. Well, oh, terrific rebounding again by Georgetown. Double digit margin. Back door. And one. Three going down hard. And the Hoyas take a 10 point lead. Folks, this is basketball right here. This is by Jeff Green. Well, terrific back door leading to a layup. Georgetown now with a 10 point lead. And we're looking at some terrific half court basketball from Georgetown. Back door cuts using the aggressiveness of the Ohio State defense, trying to extend and create some steals, using it against them. 16 points for Green, 17 for Hibbert, 16 for Shotzi Cook to lead the way for the Hoyas. Up by 11 now. A 7 leading a 2. The winner to take off Florida. And let's take a look at that 
last backdoor bucket, Pete Carrillo would be proud. Well, he certainly would. Again, dribble towards the defense. The defender on the weak side turns his head. And Jeff Green just goes back door. Fortunately, he's okay after that collision on the baseline. Butler to Dials down the lane. He's bumped. Hibbert pulls it down. And how about if you're John Thompson the third? Not only is your father a legendary coach, but your college coach is a legendary coach. And he has done a nice job of blending in a cross-section of both of those coaches' philosophy. Well, he's been lucky with genes and teaching. His education has been tremendous in basketball, and it shows. You know, John Thompson was a pretty decent Ivy League player and obviously absorbed everything that he could from Pete Carrillo. And you know they were talking basketball around the dinner table. Big John, if he allowed anybody to talk. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't happen too often. Oh, he's the boss. <laughs> he is the boss. But Roy Hibbert has been the boss. What a game, what a tournament so far for the big man. 19 points, 13 rebounds, and he is putting up Georgetown big man numbers. Butler throws it away. Owens with the steal. Wow. Georgetown coming in the And they're putting on their coats. 228 to go, 61 to 48. Sullinger fouls out. He graduated from college today. He is a terrific athlete, folks. Defensively, hopefully we'll see him somewhere next year. Getting a standing ovation from the Buckeye faithful. And you take a look again, you know, Terrence Dials, Jaquel Foster close to their season averages. Sullinger, maybe not points, but certainly in defensive plays and hustle, gave it his all. And Georgetown takes its largest lead and once again. A look at the numbers for the Buckeyes. Already, the seeds falling here in Dayton, North Carolina, a three losing in the Washington, D.C. bracket to George Mason, Ohio State. Trying to get back in as Butler goes down hard. That's your mind, Butler. And he may have banged his forearm on the floor. Uh, you can see the drive right there. Really just loses his balance. Doesn't look like he was hit. Here it is again in regular speed. Listen for the fall. And it's the elbow. Butler has had a sensational season only a sophomore from Lima he one of, he is one of the top point guards in the Big Ten does a great job of getting his teammates involved starting their offense not turning the ball over well, he's second in the conference and assist turnover ratio and you know, he's the kind of guy that you need out there to create shots for himself and for others Butler helped up. He's trying to work that arm out. So let's take a look. The winner of this game advances to take on the Florida Gators in Minneapolis. Billy Donovan's team out of the SEC playing extremely well. Well, they put on a, a show against Wisconsin-Milwaukee. And breaking that pressure using the two big guys, Crawford and Noah, who show that they got some guard skills. That's going to be a tough matchup for either of these teams. Lewis down the lane in the corner. Sylvester loses it. Now Ashanti Cook in the backcourt. Trying to avoid fouls. I think Ohio State was trying to foul him. And somehow Ashanti Cook played a little Houdini and got the ball into the front court. Yeah. And take a look at some of the things Roy Hibbert has done today. Well, was there anything he didn't do? But here again, nice up fake, nice move inside, and an excellent position on the offensive glass. We've seen him spin to the basket off the dribble from the free throw line. 
Yeah, we've seen him dump on people. And this is a young man, again, that last year everybody talked about as a project. This year he's a six-point improvement in scoring, and I guarantee you that, you know, in the next couple of games, if Georgetown's able to play those next couple of games, we'll continue to see him improve. Sylvester rejected by Hibbert, saved by Wallace. Boy, he hit that so hard, I just, the air came out of it. Roy Hibbert. They called him a project, a needle in the haystack. But wow. As Sylvester knocks it out. 126 to play. Dad Mata. Nobody expected this team to play as well as they played this season. They won the Big Ten regular season championship. Lost in the finals of the tournament. You know, they had the Big Ten player of the year in Terrence Dials, someone who people didn't really project to be the star of the conference. Owens, mid-range jump shots, and help is on the way for Ohio State. They've got a pretty good recruiting class coming in. A minute to go, the Georgetown Hoyas. Basketball to Jamar Butler. Lead at 66-52, Butler with the basket. And a foul in the backcourt. Today's Chevrolet players of the game. Let's take a look. Roy Hibbert, the big man. 20 and 13. Terrence Dials ends his career with 19 points on 6 of 11 shooting. Well, it was a terrific battle between these two guys. Obviously, the very much established Terrence Dials. We said again, Big Ten Player of the Year. A guy who's gone in an awful lot of accolades. And the up-and-comer in Roy Hibbert and boy he's starting to get up and he during this tournament in two games thus far has been coming coming on strong honorable mention goes to Ashanti Cook 17 points and he hits shots from the very beginning to Kel Foster driving to the basket batted out Cook with the rebound and Ohio State will back off as Owens Brings it over the line. The Georgetown Hoyas out of the Big East will head to the Sweet 16 for the first time since the 2000 2001 season. Minneapolis will be the place to be. Sets up a great matchup as Green hits the jump shot. Seventy to fifty-two. So here we go. Georgetown goes to Minneapolis. Billy Donovan and the Gators are waiting for him. Congratulations, John Thompson the third. Now let's go to Greg Double in New York. All right, Gus. Thank you. And